Okay, in this video, we're gonna take a look at a small loop composition I've already arranged and check out some of the features uh, that can make your loop composition or beat more interesting. Check it out. I have used the Workspace browser and the metronome icon from before, if you remember this guy right here, to make sure that all the loops fit together rhythmically in the same tempo. So if we listen to these two loops, for instance, the bass and drums, they work together. Even though this one was originally recorded at 84 beats per minute, this one was originally recorded at 97 beats per minute, and our session tempo is actually 90 beats per minute. They're all the same tempo now, 90 beats per minute. Um, I've also made sure that the loops are compatible harmonically by looking at the key right here in the fretless bass, C sharp minor. The clean guitar here is uh, C sharp minor and the piano is C sharp minor. One note, if you hear yelping, you may be hearing my dog in the background. Yay for remote teaching. Boo to coronavirus. So let's check this out a little bit more. The first thing I do is have the drums come in, right? So if I go back to the beginning, it gives us a little introduction, and then the bass jumps in. Now that's only 16 bars. It's not a full beat, but it's going to help me demonstrate some of the principles. So number one, not everything is playing at the same time. The drums is the only track combined together that play the entire time. And that does get a little boring. We're gonna spice it up here in just a second. The bass comes in in bar three. It leaves before the drums leave. Uh, the guitar plays once in a while. And then the piano comes in in the middle here. This is a good A section. If I wanted to expand this to a full beat, I would want to compose like something slightly different, like a B section, and then maybe return to A with both A and B together, and it would be kind of lengthy. But this is uh, good for starters. So um, the drums come in, the bass comes in, this guitar. Let's think about the volume level of this guitar. If I left it where it was originally, at zero decibels here, which is loud, don't let the number fool you. That's too loud. So I'm about to bring that down, maybe about nine decibels or so. I'm gonna mute the piano for now. Let's talk about this guitar, let's think about it. I could move it around. I could have it come in at bar eight. Notice I'm still in grid mode and I'm gonna change my grid to whole bars just so I can see the grid lines a little more clearly from the zoom level. Now let's listen to how it goes. It's a lot longer. That works there too. Maybe we could put it right up front with the bass. Maybe we change our grid to, I don't know, let's say quarter notes and move it so it's coming in in the middle of a bar. I kind of like that. Um, actually, if I take a look at this loop, I can stretch it out. The entire loop is actually longer than what we have here. Here is the full 
four bar loop. And what I've done is I've cut it down with my trim tool to just the first few beats, but you could do something like this and then maybe have a different instance. So it's part of the loop, and then when it comes in a second time, you know, that doesn't sound bad. So the point is, it's up to you and your creativity. Where do you want these loops to come in and come out? Do you want to use the entire loop? Do you want to trim it? Do you want to just trim it down to that note and then duplicate it with Command D I showed you in the other video? Sounds kind of weird. Uh, you may notice these little faders down here that say zero dB. If you don't have those, you will need to go to view, clip, and choose to see the clip gain info right there. Once you can see that, you could make adjustments. So we could make these quieter, each one successively quieter. So it's kind of like an echo, almost like a delay. And we'll make that last one super quiet. And let's hear that. That's another creative effect. It's kind of like it's receding into the distance. All right, whatever, you could do that. If I don't like that, I can just go back and trim that original loop out. Whatever you want to do is fine. Uh, let's take a look at these effects. So if you cannot see your inserts column in the edit window, what you need to do is go to this little pop-up menu right here. It's the edit window view selector. Click on it and choose to see your inserts, A to E or F to J, it doesn't really matter. But here is where you can choose what to show and hide in this edit window. So I've chosen to show my inserts and uh, I have added a plugin. Here's how to add a plugin. You click on one of these blank inserts, and if it's a stereo track, I usually choose multi channel plugins, and then you can choose a plugin. Now, I have a bunch of plugins, like hundreds of them. You won't have that many. That's okay. You don't need that many. Choose EQ37 band. That's a great one. And let's solo this bass track. And we'll just loop play it by right clicking and choosing loop on the play arrow. And we'll make some adjustments and listen. And I'm going to didn't do a whole lot. I really want to filter, so I'm going to bring in this low pass filter. Crank that up. Totally different sound. Maybe I want to add some kind of resonance here. All right. Uh, we'll learn how to use these plugins at a later time, but I'm just kind of showing you. Let's add a delay here, like maybe air dynamic delay. I would never do this on a bass, by the way. I'm just showing you how to add a plugin. That is kind of cool. Uh, I'm not going to keep it. So I want to get rid of it. I'm going to click on this little dot and choose no insert. Let's go up and take a look at what I did to the drums here. Uh, the drums are here and they're kind of repetitive throughout and you know, whatever. So in this second track, uh, I put one of the drum clips down here and I added this EQ37 band and I'm gonna unbypass it and I have restricted 
the frequencies of the drums. So all the low ends cut out, all the high ends cut out, and it's boosted in the middle. I'm not expecting you to know how to do any of this stuff yet. I just want you to play around uh, and experiment. So those drums there go from full drums to affected drums, if we listen to both tracks. And that just gives the listener something extra to listen to. I've also added reverb on this pop guitar. Let's take a listen to that. So you can hear that kind of echo in the background, that hazy echo, that's a reverb. And I've added EQ to this piano. So if I play that. So I've added a low pass filter onto there. I might adjust that. It changes the whole sound. So just to recap, when you're making your loop compositions, have the instruments, the tracks, come in and out at different times. Make the song tell a story, okay? Make the beat have forward momentum. Don't just stack tracks up and, you know, do the, don't drop your tracks in all at the beginning and then keep them going the whole time. That's very boring, okay? No songs do that. Um, and don't do the stair step. I see people do this. I'm not 100% sure why they would do it, but this is what I see a lot um, with beginning, very beginning producers. They'll do something like this where it's one thing and then another thing and then another thing and then another thing and this thing never comes back in and it just, it's weird. Try to make your beat sound like something you would hear on the radio or, um, you know, in a commercial or on an album. 